Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, it's all about pop culture. We're each gonna be on a team, and we're gonna be trying to get that team to be the first to have 50 points by validly answering all sorts of different categories in the realm of pop culture. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at I Gotta Go With. It's a team-based party game for two or more players, and I'm gonna show you how to set up and play the game because I'm gonna be doing a rule school for you so that you don't have to read the rules yourself. So without further ado, let's get started. I Gotta Go With is a team party game for two or more players where you're going to be trying to work together to come up with valid answers of all different clues in different areas of pop culture. Some rounds are timed and you're trying to secretly come up with answers as a team that other teams won't have, but be careful, if you say an answer that others say, you won't get points for it. Some rounds allow teams to go up against other teams one at a time until there's only one team standing with valid answers. Other rounds force you to select one single person from your team to be the one to answer it, and sometimes you'll get to select the people from the other team that are answering it, so based on the category and knowing who's playing, you can try to get the most points. And if you're playing with only two players, or you're with a big group that just wants to sit around the couch or on a road trip, there is a quick play variant that allows you to play this game anywhere. To set up, you're first going to split up into different teams. Each team is gonna get a pencil and some paper, and each team should not have more than five players on each team. And you can have more than two teams, but if you do have more than two, you'll need to get another writing implement because the game comes with only two pencils. If it's your first time playing, you'll need to put together the spinner. You'll find the two plastic black pieces. You'll take this disc and put it from underneath and push it all the way through, just like this. And then you'll take the spinner and you'll place it in here, just like this. Now you'll be able to spin the different categories. Next, you'll find the I Gotta Go With cards. You can split them up and shuffle them up into uh, one deck per team and place them near each team so everybody can reach them easily. The object of the game is to be the first team to have 50 points. You get points by coming up with valid answers for certain cards that come up in certain categories. The team with the youngest player will go first since they haven't been exposed to as much pop culture as the others. They will spin the spinner and depending on which quadrant it lands in, it'll tell you what type of round it's going to be. Let's assume after they spun, it went to listing. Both of the yellow boxes will use a timer and the blue boxes will not, but let's go into listing. So the card will be taken and read aloud by that team. In this case it says, properties on the original Monopoly board. They would then turn this over. Each team will have a scribe which will be writing down answers on their paper. All the other players on that team will be whispering answers into that player's ear and they continue to write down as many answers that they can think of before the time runs out. And once the timer's up, the teams will read through their answers and if any other team also has that answer, they cross it out and it's not a point. For example, let's say this team says boardwalk, but another team has it, so all teams that have it just cross it out because it's not gonna be worth anything. Park Place is a popular one, another team had it, so even if one team has it, it gets crossed out, but let's say none of the other teams had Baltic Ave in Illinois, I'd get a point for each of those, so our team would have two points from this round. And you can keep track of points on a separate piece of paper. Head to Head works very similarly to listing. It's going to use a timer, and you're gonna be listing answers, but only one player will be doing it. Once the category has been revealed in red, each team gets to uh, pick one player that will be the one writing. No one else can talk to or help them out. That player's by themselves writing their answers on their sheet of paper, just like in listing. And once the time runs out, that player from each team will read out the answers. It's scored the same as the listing rounds. Now, no member of a team can take two consecutive turns in head-to-head -head rounds. In the We Go, You Go round, there's no timer. You're trying to be the last team to give a valid answer to the category. The team that spun will draw the card, read the category, and starting with them, anyone from their team can yell out an answer that fits this category, wealthy fictional characters. They might say Richie Rich or Daddy Warbucks, but once they say one answer, it goes to the next team clockwise. Each team has between five and 10 seconds to come up with an answer. You can decide what that time is before you start the game. If a team does not answer in that time, they are out of this round and the last team standing will get the five points. 
If more than one player blurts out an answer close to each other, the first one is taken and another team can use that second one if they want. If it's exactly simultaneous, the team has to decide which answer is taken and another team can use the other answer. No answers can be used more than once in the same round. The I go, you go works the same way as the we go, you go, except that once the category has been uh, read to everybody, each team gets to select one player that is going to be the only one that's going to be able to answer this throughout the round. Everything else works the same way as the we go, you go. In any of the rounds, when you select a card to be the category, if you don't want that category card, you can trade it in for new cards for the cost of three points. After a challenge is over, the team clockwise to that team will spin the spinner and continue with that challenge, and this will continue until one team has 50 points and has won the game. There might be times where you'd like to object an answer from another team. Now, the internet is the ultimate judge, and the team that loses this objection will lose two points, but there are some specifics for each of the types of rounds. In the yellow rounds, listing or head-to-head, -head, answers are given at the end of the round. And so at that point, as they're giving the answer, you can object, and whatever team loses that objection loses two points. During the blue rounds, objections will be happening in real time. So maybe a team just gives an answer and another team wants to object. Well, we'd stop and we'd uh, look up the answer and see who's going to get the minus two points. Also, if you get the minus two points and you lose an objection, you're out of this round. If there's more than two teams still left, you continue playing this round. If there are not two teams left and only one left, then that team would again be the last one standing it and get the five points as normal. If you're only playing with two players or if you're playing with more players and you just want to sit around a couch or you're on a road trip and you want to just play this game and have fun listing out different items, then you can use the quick play method. And that's simply pull out a category and just start listing out things and have fun. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into I Gotta Go With faster than you normally would if you had to read the rule book yourself. If you have any more questions about the rules, you can go ahead and put them as comments in this video and I'll do the best to answer them.